So it turns out that these new AMD Radeon 9000 series cards are really good at Linux gaming, and you don't even need the higher end 9070XT. What I've got here is a small form factor build that I recently put together. I did a video on it, but in that video we did use the XT variant. I've gone back and I've swapped it out with a Radeon RX 9070 non-XT, and I've had a lot of people asking about our DNA 4 gaming in Linux. So I figured I'd go ahead and make a video of this machine running Bazai. And if you're not familiar with Bazai, it's pretty close to what's running on the Steam Deck. So we've got that really nice interface. It's great for couch gaming. And I personally love pairing this up with small form factor PCs. That way you've got kind of a console-esque sized PC that just puts down a lot of performance. And this build is a bit different from others that you're gonna see because what we've got here is a 16 core, 32 thread laptop CPU. And that definitely sounds odd because it's in a desktop, but I assure you this thing is putting down some great performance because it's the Ryzen 9 7945HX and it can run it up to 100 watts. I achieved this by using Minus Forum's BD795i all-in-one motherboard. Comes with a cooler, motherboard, and CPU all-in-one ready to go. And of course, when it comes to the GPU, we've got the Radeon RX 9070 non-XT, 16 gigs of VRAM, and I'm using the ASUS Prime version here. If you're interested in learning a little more about the build, I'll leave a link in the description to the original video I created, but I wanna jump right into some gaming. Then uh, we're gonna connect this to my game capture, take a look at the operating system, and then I wanna show you exactly what this thing can do. So the first one we have here is Spider-Man 2, very high, no FSR, 1440p, and I will admit that this one is working a bit wonky right now. It's kind of like when the original Spider-Man Remastered was released, uh, we did have issues in Linux with it. I think it just needs a little more time. We're still over that 60 mark, but it's a bit odd because in some cases we're over 140 FPS with it, and then it drops down to around 71, so there are some kinks that need to be ironed out here. But either way, I mean, it is really playable on this system. We're not using FSR, so you've got that option, and even frame generation if you want to. But I'd say at 1440 with the 9070, you're probably not going to need it unless you want to get those really, really high frame rates. Jumping right in here. So far, this thing's been working great, but I did run into one issue. And that's going to be with Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I did uninstall the game. I redid the shader cache on it but it crashes on startup. Over on the Bazai GitHub, there's a couple other people with the 9070 XT and they've been able to run the game no problem. So I'll just wait a little while and I'm sure it'll be fixed. Definitely has to do with the uh, driver version we're using right now. And by the way, if we head over there, I'll show you from settings, system, AMD Ryzen 9 7945HX. Like I mentioned, we're using that Minus Forum all-in-one board here, 16 cores, 32 threads got 32 gigs of RAM and of course we've got that 9070 non-XT. Right here the video driver is 25.0.1. In order for these cards to work you need to be on 25.01 and it has been added to stable but I did go over to testing to see if I could get Cyberpunk working. Unfortunately even with testing right now I just can't get it to launch but everything else that I've tested works without a hitch. Now, I do want to customize this real quick and I've got Decky installed. We're going to go with CSS loader. Got a bunch of themes here, but there's a certain way that I like this set up. And yeah, I think this looks really good. Super clean, especially for like a small form factor living room PC. When you boot this up, it's gonna boot directly into game mode here. So you'd have something that looks very similar. Of course, we've still got all the options here. They're just a bit hidden. Head over to the store. Not a problem to buy stuff, just like you would on the Steam Deck itself. We'll go to our performance with the overlay on. As you can see, I mean, we've got 16 cores, 32 threads. It does take up a bit of space, but I will have this up while we're running games. And we do have access to everything else we would on the Steam Deck. I've disabled the frame limiter within games. VRR, HDR is working here as long as you've got a monitor that supports HDR. You can go with half rate shading, but uh, with this 9070 XT, I really haven't had to use any kind of mods or hacks or anything like that. These new RDNA 4 cards are great, and this 9070 XT is perfect for 1440p gaming. And that's exactly what we're going to be taking a look at now, and with every one of these games you're going to see running, I'm not going to be using FSR, and I'm not going to be using frame gen. I want a native 1440p, and I want to see if we can max these out. 
And the first game we have here is Elden Ring. We're at 1440p, maximum settings, and this looks so good on this little setup here. So yeah, it's been a while since I've tested this at maximum. Uh, usually when I'm running this game, it's on an iGPU, so we gotta go down to the low or medium settings, 1080p. So with this at 1440 max, it looks beautiful. And we've got a cap frame rate at 60. I do believe that at ultra 4K, the 9070 would handle this game. I always like to throw at least one older game in. So we've got Left 4 Dead 2, 1440 max settings. And I guess this caps out at 300 FPS just across the board because that's exactly what we're getting here. Okay, well, I mean, it's fluctuating between like 297 and 300, but I'm not counting. This is way more than I'll ever need. And I'm 100% positive that we'd be able to run this at 4K maxed out. Here's Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, 1440p, very high, no FSR, no frame gen. It's not going to be needed here. After about 10 minutes of playing around with this, we had an average of 94 FPS. And in some cases, I mean, it's well above 100. So it's more than I'll ever need with this game. I wouldn't mind locking this down at 60, just maxed out like it is. It looks great. The next one I wanted to take a look at was Marvel Rivals, where at 1440p Ultra with no FSR, I've been playing this on Windows with the 9070 XT, and I swear I'm seeing better performance over here in Linux on the 9070 non-XT variant than I did in Windows with the XT. And not by just a little bit, I'm talking around 30 FPS more over here, but this could come down to an update that happened overnight, I just didn't realize it happened because this is an early access game and it is getting better all the time. Witcher 3, 1440p, Ultra, no FSR, and I'm not using dynamic resolution scale. Originally going in here, even going to Ultra, that dynamic resolution is turned on. So it's gonna lock down to whatever frame rate you have it set to. I went ahead and disabled it. We're seeing an average of around 108 FPS with it. And again, kind of like Elden Ring, this is one of those games that I always test on iGPUs. I forget how beautiful this looks when you can really take the settings up. And the final game we're going to be testing out here is Monster Hunter Wilds, 1440p, ultra preset, and this is the only game I needed FSR for. And if you've tried playing this on basically any PC, you know that performance is kind of all over the place right now. So within a couple weeks, hopefully a lot of the stuff will be fixed up, but we do need some FSR because if you take a look at the FPS, we're right there in the mid 70s. So without FSR enabled at ultra settings, it will dip under 60. And that's exactly what I'm seeing in Windows. To tell you the truth, there's not much of a difference in the frame rate from Windows over to Linux here, at least right now at the time of making this video. So the way I see it is on a system like this right now, I would go down to high with no FSR. And that's just really if you don't want to use FSR. Another thing to keep in mind with Bazite here is we do have a full desktop interface, so we can easily swap over there at any given time. And if you need to get some work done, you've got a full desktop to do it in. You can install your favorite apps from Terminal, just like any Linux distro, or it's got Discover built in, just like the Steam Deck. So if you wanna go through and download applications like GIMP or even standalone emulators, you can do it from there. So you've also got a full-fledged desktop operating system with this, along with a really nice gaming interface and game mode. And I really love having this set up in the living room, something like this that puts down enough power to run these games at 1440p with that easy to use interface. You wouldn't even need a keyboard and mouse connected to something like this if you got it set up in the living room. It's a real console-like experience and you can customize your performance. I'm gonna be keeping an eye on driver updates here for these RDNA 4i GPUs. Like I mentioned, I couldn't get Cyberpunk 2077 running right now, but I'm sure it's probably gonna be fixed very soon, or it's probably already fixed at the time of this thing going live. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. In my early testing on the 9070 in Linux, I think I'm seeing some great performance, and I'm sure it's only gonna get better from here. 
If you're interested in putting something like this together, I'll leave links to everything I used in the description. And if you want to see how Windows performs on this machine, link for that video is down below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.